I told you it was a hype intro. So good afternoon or good morning, everyone, depending on where you're joining from. My name is Jesse and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. And we are so excited that you guys are back in the classroom. Wherever you're joining from from around the world, whatever your situation is with students, we're just thrilled to have you tuning in online, live with your full class in classrooms or any variation in between. It is so awesome getting to share some of the world's top conservationists, scientists, explorers, and more with you. So September is all about ocean plastics. We've got over 40 programs in the month, and I think 20 of them are on the theme of ocean plastics. It's a hugely topical, um, uh, it's a hugely topical idea or topic uh, that we like to cover here. It's really important and it's a thing that a lot of classes can actually get involved in solving. So today we are joined live by Daphne in at OceanWise, the Vancouver Aquarium. So Daphne's gonna walk us through a little bit about what the problems with ocean plastic are and how you can help from, at, from home. So thank you so, so much for joining us today, Daphne, and uh, take us away. We're so excited to hear what you have to share with us. Awesome, well, thanks for having me today. Uh, as Jesse said, my name is Daphne. I'm an educator here at OceanWise, which the Vancouver Aquarium is a part of. And that means that today in the aquarium, I am on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. So we're very uh, privileged and lucky to be able to be on their land and continue to educate people about the natural world and how we can treat it with respect, just as those nations have since time immemorial. But we are here to talk about some ways that humans do affect our planet, and that is through plastic. So one of the first things I want us to do today is to look around you and see what sorts of plastic are near you. Maybe there's plastic touching you even. So point to some plastic near you and maybe we can compare what we're seeing. I can always bring up classes and see if they have any plastic in their classrooms too. I see students pointing around and teachers and everyone. Yeah, Mr. Steltman, we've got uh, here. What do we got? The face shield, Mr. Elsa's class, they've got their face shields, which by the way, kudos to all the classes for wearing face shields and keeping safe in the classroom. Miss Cumps class, they've got, we've got plastic Purell bottles. Man, that's like the safest bunch of plastic of all time. So way to go. That's great, guys. Awesome. Right. Amazing. Well, thanks for sharing, everyone. One thing I do want us to remember is that plastic is all around us. And we will never get rid of all plastic because it is super helpful. Plastic, when it was created, it opened up a huge opportunity for humans, especially in keeping food fresh. If you ever go to a supermarket or a grocery store, you realize a lot of food is kept in plastic packaging to keep it fresh for us and to keep it healthier for our bodies for a longer period of time. So plastic has so many uses. Even my watch is plastic. Parts of my phone and microphone are plastic. It's all around us. But are there plastics that we could do without? Are there things that we don't necessarily need to have in plastic or as plastic? Take a moment to think. If you think about something that you saw that was in plastic, maybe it could be switched for another material Maybe those Purell bottles that were plastic, maybe they could be a different material or maybe we could refill them with more hand sanitizer. So there's lots of ways that we can reduce the amount of that single use plastic. So maybe that's a plastic spoon, maybe that's a plastic wrapper on some food. Sometimes it's not necessary. And we'll take a look at that a little bit more later on. But I do want us to think about some of the ways that these, especially single-use plastics, 
can be harmful for the environment. So if we can brainstorm in our classes, how can plastic be harmful, especially in the ocean? And I can bring up some classes to see what they think if you'd like that, perfect, all right. So let's go to Mr. Elsa's class. I know you guys are all in the class. Is there anything that jumps out for why plastic might be harmful in the ocean? Oh, is your mic on guys? It is, but not coming through. Sorry for the trouble. There we go. How about now? No? <laughs> There has to be some tech issue, otherwise it's no fun. We'll come back to, oh, we'll come back to you guys. Mr. Stelvin, what about your class? What did we learn? Yes. That it's all around us? That it's all around us? It's okay. Grace? It was, yeah, we watched that video this morning and it was in all the birds that they were cutting open. Nice. Okay. So we've got birds yeah. we've got all around us. I'm going to go to Miss Kump's group. What do you guys think? Okay. Go ahead, Claire. Well, a lot of people are going to use plastic for single uses and oh. need to find something that can break down since plastic is meant to um, stay forever. Instead of breaking down, it just breaks apart. Nice. So it's everywhere. It breaks apart. Fantastic. Mr. Elsa's group, I know you guys got your mic working now. Go for it. Go for it as well. Oh. Wait, should I go here? You stop right there. Fine. Um, animals might eat the plastic and then die. There you go. Animals might eat the plastic. Daphne, this is great. So we'll come to the other classes for next because I know you have more interactive. So Daphne, let's uh, dive back in. It's awesome. Yeah, there are some really great ideas from all of the students, all the classes. And these are some major points to hit on is that we have plastics that can get eaten uh, by animals and can go up the food chain. They can hurt those animals, even kill them, unfortunately, as well as some of those plastics may sit in the ocean long enough to break into smaller pieces. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But I also wanna mention that sometimes it does get stuck around animals too. So Jesse, maybe we can share some of these visuals now and we can take a look at this wonderful beach. Now, when I think about a beach, this is not what I would like to see. So you can maybe just in your class amongst yourselves, discuss some of the garbage that you're seeing maybe some of the items that might be plastic. So maybe not everything is made out of plastic, but we should see maybe some plastic bottles, some plastic containers, those plastic fishing floats, a lot of that plastic. And just as we were saying, it doesn't really break down. So it floats around across the ocean. When we have done shoreline cleanups around here in Vancouver, or even, uh, in Haida Gwaii or along Vancouver Island, we found garbage from countries across the world. So it's not just local garbage. All this plastic is traveling everywhere. And we may see some animals even hitching a ride on some of these. So we have some really cool pelagic barnacles. So barnacles that live uh, attached to things in the deeper water a little bit different than the ones you might see on rocks at a beach. But we do see even large animals, unfortunately getting stuck in this plastic. So we see one of these stellar sea lions with a packing strap stuck around its neck. So unfortunately those don't stretch and can get really uncomfortable and create some wounds on these animals. Now, here at OceanWise and the Vancouver Aquarium, we have an amazing animal care team, and we also have our Marine Mammal Rescue Center. And our animal care staff, with the help of the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, is able to go out and help some of these animals. So they actually went out to do this, uh, I believe it was last week, and they had a few successful disentanglements where they would put the animal to sleep temporarily 
so that it's safe to get near that wild animal, cut it off, give it some medicine if needed, and then give it another uh, shot to wake it back up. And there it is without that garbage hurting it anymore. Now, what's pretty crazy is during this last week, they also had another call about an animal in distress, which was also human related, but unfortunately not plastic. So it's not just plastic that can harm these animals as well. But these single use plastics, such as that packing strap, are a huge problem for these animals in the ocean. So you can see about 40% of plastic produced is disposed immediately. So that's those single use forks or knives, those plastic bags like we see in that image. Can you think of something else in your classroom that could be a single use plastic? Let me bring in Ms. Burge's group into the session. Uh, Ms. Burge, anything in your classroom? I know the classroom is virtual right now, but single-use plastics? We have just kind of talked about, I mean, they're just kind of in our, I'm presenting in Google Meet, so they're having great conversations along the sides, just talking about how frustrating it is Hershey's that- Hershey's a rapper. Sorry, my kid. That's how that's frustrating that's it is. That's 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 rappers, <laughs> right? And some kiddos are saying- Beach like, balls, oh. bottles. I didn't oh. know that they could be hurt. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. The kids are killing it. We don't even need to go straight to the teacher. Awesome. Right? Um, yeah, they're, just, they, they're saying that it's frustrating that we as humans have these things. And they harm lots of animals. Of. Yep. So we've covered a lot of points. That's fantastic. The Miss Burgess group, awesome guys. Uh, Miss Oaks, do you guys have anything in your class that jumps out? Uh, let's see what they have to say. Bring them in. Like, I love the situation from all the kids, by the way. Like, I know it's a first what do you think? Hmm. What do you think, Miss Oaks class? Um, plastic yeah. in the sea. If it's in pieces, it doesn't always have to be bad. It can also be pretty in the form of sea glass. I like it. <laughs> a positive take. <laughs> Nice, guys. Um, so, Daphne, take us away again, and uh, let's dive in. I like that the classes have really adopted all the lessons you've been sharing so far, did a lot of research ahead of time. This is awesome. So, yeah. yeah, I'm really excited to see here what everyone's questions will be later on. So, just like you were saying, there's all these items that are plastic, and they are used once and then tossed, usually ending up in the garbage, but some plastics can be recycled. So, there are parts to that. But all of this garbage that ends up in our water and not just the ocean, any water source can travel through our waterways to the ocean. So I know that in uh, the wonderful plastic story map, there talks a little bit about these currents in the ocean, these big gyres, which are like a big whirlpool of sorts moving very, very slowly, but they collect this garbage into these, what we call garbage patches. And this is kind of a great way to show visually how big some of them can be. So if you look at the top left of the screen, you'll see a circle that has the North Pacific, California, and the North Equatorial Currents, all combining into one. And in that area, there is the largest garbage patch, that Great Pacific garbage patch. And it is now larger than both British Columbia and Alberta combined. So that's much larger than even the state of Texas currently. And that's just one of those groups. So there's lots of this plastic floating around our oceans, transferring from country to country. So when I visited other countries, I've even noticed English written on packaging in a country where English is not the native language. So maybe that's some of the plastic from Canada traveling to those other countries. But you're right, we have our large plastics that we think of like those plastic bags or other toys, things like that, that break apart into what we like to call microplastics. If you look at your finger, you look at your pinky nail, about the width 
of your pinky nail is how big these microplastics can get. So about the size of a grain of rice or smaller. That means so much of it we can't even see with our own eyes. You need a microscope. So we do have a sample of the ocean here from some of our scientists. Hopefully this works for you. You can see there are some live animals still in this sample mixed in with all that plastic. It makes it really hard for those other larger animals to tell the difference. And some of these plastics do break apart in the ocean into those small microplastics. We call those our secondary plastics. So we have the fragments of larger pieces, or we have synthetic fibers from clothing, or you have your primary microplastics, which were designed to be tiny. So that could be like nurdles in a, in a stuffy, or it could be microbeads in a face wash or toothpaste, which fortunately have been banned in Canada. So hopefully there's way less of those microbeads floating around. But if we take a closer look at our clothing, I'd love for everyone to take a look maybe at, a, at your own tag on your clothes, if possible, and see what materials your clothing is made of. Maybe we can figure out if those materials are made of plastic or something natural like cotton. Okay. While you guys are doing that, if anyone's already found their clothing, fantastic. I'll also be checking YouTube to see if you guys have any thoughts. Um, Miss Carol's group in Gaspésie in Quebec, uh, they've been sharing some great stuff, so please do type in there. But let's go to Miss Cump's class. What do you guys notice? What is your clothing? <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, was was, sorry, I had a question from a student, yes. Uh, we had a, Daniel right here was wearing a uh, polyester uh, soccer sweatshirt. So we know that that definitely probably has some sort of plastic in it. Yep, good. We got polyester. How about in Mr. Stelton's class? What do you guys have? We've got some polyester. We've got some nylon. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> polyester nylons those are awesome um mr ellis's group oh student right up the camera hi there what do you have i have 60 percent cotton and 40 percent polyester okay so a blend okay so daphne tell us all about it what's going on with all those things yeah so there's lots of different materials that our clothing is made of and we're super lucky to have those options today because not that long ago we weren't having plastic and plastic is in so many of those clothing materials such as polyester, nylon, acrylic, spandex, etc. Now we do still use many natural fibers such as cotton or wool or hemp along those sorts but we do see as we wash our clothing we're seeing lots of those fibers come off of these clothing items and that can be another source of these microplastics. So it's something for us to be aware of when we're purchasing clothing or as we're washing. So I did not bring mine today, but I have a bag that I wash my synthetic or plastic clothes in to collect those fibers so they don't get introduced into the ocean. So there's quite a few products out there that can help you with that so that when I wash my clothes, I don't have those fibers going into the water getting into the food chain. So that could be those, maybe some prawns or some krill, eating those fibers, may having them look like plankton. Then the little fish eat those krill, larger fish eat those fish, so on and so forth, until we end up at the top of our food chain. That could be our whales, our seals, our sea lions, many other animals, including us. So we do have to be careful about what we are letting get into our water. So here at OceanWise, we have a wonderful team of researchers looking into the effects of our clothing on the ocean. And one of our researchers looks at mussels. Mussels are a filter feeder, like those barnacles we saw earlier. So they eat lots of that plankton, the small plants and algae in the water. You can see they put some paprika in with this one. So it should be moving along its gills as it filters the food. 
But, oh, just like this uh, barnacle we have here as well feeding. But as this transfers through the food web, it creates problems. So these muscles help us identify where there's lots of these fibers. So we're looking at lots of places around British Columbia to start out with um, and looking at muscles in those areas. So here we have our wonderful researcher, uh, Julie, and she is looking at those muscles. She's then going to, just like in our stomach, we digest our food. So if we ate a muscle, the acids and enzymes in our stomach would turn it into mush. That's sort of what she does chemically. Uh, and then after that, they get uh, kind of stirred up and they filter those pieces of clothing out. So at the very uh, far right, you'll see the little sample of fibers that have settled out of the muscle's stomach. Now, that can help us identify many things, but it only shows us one part of the food web. So in the Arctic, where plastic is also a huge issue, we have Rhiannon here who has been researching beluga stomachs. So she has the privilege of being able to visit uh, the Inuit community of Taktoyaktak, and she gets to look at the stomachs of the belugas from their annual hunts. So after the animal has already been uh, deceased and is going to be consumed. So she's gonna look at the stomach contents and the best part about these belugas is they tell us the whole food chain. So they have eaten these larger fish that may have eaten smaller fish that may have eaten that krill and eaten those other plankton or pieces of plastic. So we can get a better visual of an understanding of the whole Arctic food web and how much plastic it's consuming. So we don't have the full results from this study yet, but hopefully we will soon. But it can be hard being a researcher. So I do have a quiz for you. Now, we're gonna try and figure out what samples we have in front of us. So you either have a synthetic plastic fiber from some clothing, or you have a piece of algae or seaweed in front of you. So we'll do some votes. Who thinks that this is a synthetic piece of clothing? Okay, what I can do is have people raise their hands if they think it's synthetic, and then we can, and Mr. Elson, Mr. all our teachers that are representing the classes in the background. So, okay, so everyone seems to think this is synthetic. Miss Comes class, not so sure, bit of iffiness there. Okay, and then the other option is that it's- Is algae. It's algae, who thinks it's algae? Does anyone think it's algae? Maybe, oh, we got a, we got a few, oh, six people in Mr. Elson's class. No, uh, it's like, so more synthetic than algae, do tell. Great guesses all around, it's really hard to tell. Usually our scientists have special machines to tell them exactly what they are but that one is in fact synthetic. It is from a rain jacket, which have a variety of different uh, materials that they can be made out of, but usually a type of plastic. So what about this one? Who thinks that this one could be synthetic? Does anyone think synthetic? Any hands up? Mm, uh, two, two, four, four, peace sign in Mr. Ells' class. A few in Ms. Burgess' class. Uh, oh, a few students miss comes. So a few people say, think so. And then the other option is? Algae. Who thinks algae. algae? I think algae. I don't know. We got Miss Oak's class thinks algae. 10 in Mr. Elsa's class. Five in Miss Burgess's class. And a partridge in a pear tree. So more algae for this one. You are correct. It is actually an algae. But it gets really hard to tell. You can see they're really similar in shape. So here's another hard one. Who thinks synthetic? So plastic. Who thinks synthetic? And Miss Carol, I'm looking for you on YouTube too. Whatever you think, she thought plastic for both the last two. Okay, 10 to most people in Mr. Ellis's class, a few in Miss Burgess. So Oaks, Miss Delman, four Miss Oaks class, Miss Cump's class, not so much. Oh, a few kids putting their hands up, okay. It's sort of on the fence. And then the other option is? Is it algae? 
Is it algae? Who thinks algae? Oh, tons of people miss Comps class. New York is firmly in the algae bandwagon. Okay. A few, oh, so fewer. So Miss Comps is like the only like hardcore algae lovers for this one. I think synthetic, I think. I don't know. Tell us. It's hard to tell, but this one is in fact synthetic. So this is actually one of the materials that is, uh, we're finding the worst for letting off these fibers and that is fleece. So a synthetic, usually polyester, um, which because it's so fluffy, as you wash it, those pieces can come out quite easily. So one of the best things you can do is if you love fleece, buy one that's a little bit higher quality, tends to shed less. And even if you can wash it in a front loading washing machine, works a little bit better too. Or get a product that you can wash it in, such as I use, I believe mine is called a guppy friend. So lots of different products out there. But there's one more that I have here. Last one, synthetic, quick raise of hands. Quick raise of hands, synthetics. I think synthetic. I'm thinking, I don't know. Five, we got mo a good ha half at least in each class. Okay. All right. Then, what about uh, algae? Algae. Ha oh, all miscomes, a lot of miscomes students. More than half. So more than half think algae, but it's tight. It's close. It's down to the wire. Oh, man, it's close. This <laughs> one is actually plastic. This one is synthetic. So it really shows that difference in textures and how hard it is to identify these. So if you were a plankton looking for food, it's really hard to tell. Really easy to accidentally get uh, involved with that. Now, I would love to hear some of your ideas on how you think you could make a difference for plastic in our oceans or on our planet. What can we do? Fantastic. So uh, YouTube groups, Facebook groups, by all means, join in the conversation too. I will share it. You have a little bit more time with this one. Uh, but let me go to Miss Cump's class first. What do you guys think you can do? Okay, Ariel, come on. Uh, okay, Ariel, what can we do? We can stop littering. Okay, litter, stop don't litter. litter. Uh, okay. Perfect. Okay, how about Miss Oak's class? What do you guys think? Do we have some ideas? Hasani, what's your idea? Um, you should reuse plastic. Nice. Reuse plastic, don't yeah. litter. Mr. Steltman's group, what do you guys think? Hey, what was your idea? Find things that are more biodegradable. Fantastic. Miss Burge's group? We had kiddos who said, why are we using plastic water bottles anymore? Everybody needs metal and reusable water bottles. I know. Good point. <laughs> this is great, guys. Um, YouTube, do your thing. Mr. Elsa's class, uh, what do you guys think? Oh, they stole our idea for metal and glass uh, water bottles. We are killing it. I love that you guys have all these solutions in mind. This is awesome. Daphne, we're going to have no questions because everyone's going to be going out solving uh, problems and saving the world. It's awesome. So I heard some really, really great ideas along the lines of reusing or using a different substituted material. So maybe that metal water bottle instead of a plastic one. Great ideas. We also heard don't litter. And that's one that's really easy to try to control for yourself. Now, sometimes there's already litter on the ground. So I know that with COVID, it can be a little bit harder these days. But we are open now to sign up for shoreline cleanups right now. So if you haven't heard of the great Canadian shoreline cleanup, it's a great program where you can get the supplies or the help needed on our website and lead a cleanup in your community or join someone else's cleanup. So that way you can pick up those safe garbage items We'll leave the you know hazardous ones to the adults or experts. And that way we can help clean up what's already there. That's a great way to get friends involved. I've even known some folks that have done it for birthday parties as a fun activity. Lots of ways to get involved. But just like you were saying, there's really great ways to reuse or even rethink. So 
this is our pyramid here. You might have heard of the reduce, reuse, recycle. And those words go in order of importance. So they are like steps. But we've added a few here. We say first, think, can I refuse to use this? So if I'm at a restaurant, I always ask, I would love a water, but can I get it with no straw, please? And that way, I don't have to use that straw once and have it be thrown out. But also maybe that restaurant starts to think, hmm, maybe we'll make it more of an option instead of automatically putting those straws in those drinks for everyone. Then you can reduce the amount that you're using. So maybe if you go to the grocery store, you could reduce the number of bags you're using to put your food in. Or maybe you can think about a different product not wrapped in plastic. So I like to buy field cucumbers, which their skin is naturally thick enough to protect them and they don't need that plastic packaging that other cucumbers may need. You can also reuse things as well as then, if you can't reuse, reduce or refuse, recycle. And I know from my travels, recycling is limited in many, many areas, especially in Canada. So there's lots of other things to do in addition to that recycling, including rethinking how we are using things. So I've got Tanya here who is has challenged herself to a zero waste lifestyle. So she has her all of her garbage from the last few years in those two jars she's holding. And you can see she's reusing a lot of different items, jars, uh, using things that are different materials. I've even brought some of mine to share today as well. So let's see. Hopefully I'm not sharing any, Am I, I'm not sharing anymore, right? Cool. All right. Sorry, I'm here. There we go, we're back, yes. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, it's a new system, everyone. But I thought I'd share some of the ways that I've been reusing here at work. So I've got an old container from a different product. I just put some nice nuts in here for a snack. I have a reusable bag that I'm using for my lunch bag. I imagine many of you have those. And even for my napkin, I have just a handkerchief that I use that I can wash after using it and reuse. So what are some ways that maybe in your classroom or at home, you think you could do one of those five steps? Ooh, let's get them up. Okay. Let's bring in uh, Mr. Elsa's class first. What do you guys think? Maybe bringing more reusable water bottles. Nice. Having me come yeah. I love that that message has gotten through. That's awesome. Ms. Burgess group, what do you guys think? I'm going to, John V, do you want to un unmute yourself? I don't know if she can hear me. That's okay. Gonna... Um, reusing bags and bottles. Yeah. Um, kids were saying those. Uh, using the reusable uh, lunch bags at school. Uh, Joshua on YouTube mentioned carry a fork, spoon, and utensils on the go. He's always got his handy spoon in his pocket whenever it comes to a, a restaurant. Uh, Mr. Steltman's group, what do you guys think? What were you thinking? Reconnect. Um, I was thinking um, maybe for school lunch, um, lunches. Ah, uh, lunches without any garbage in them. Yeah. That's awesome. By the way, can I just say how thrilled I am that classes in like the first day are so keen to be involved? You guys rock. Way to go to all the students in today. Uh, Miss Oaks class, what do you guys think? Parker, unmute. <laughs> I I think that um the plastic trays in lunch should be reused with plastic plates at home nice. because then there would be way less plastic in the seeds. We are on, we are, oh, sorry. There we go. Sorry if you're still talking. I didn't want to interrupt you, <laughs> but that's awesome. We love that you guys are so keen on lunches. That's amazing. And then Miss comes to us. What do you guys think? 
All right, so we were talking about how much we love our seltzer in New York, and Kathleen and I were mentioning that we have our soda streams. So rather than buying bottles of seltzer, we just make it ourselves at home. Perfect. Love it, guys. And then on YouTube, what do we got? Um, reuse our jackets and book bags every year from Miss Carol's group. We got don't put snacks in Ziploc plastic bags, small containers with lids. So we have a lot of great solutions today, Daphne. Amazing. These are all amazing ideas, everyone. I love how creative you are. And it's those creative ideas that are going to help this problem. Because really, it's going to be the youth of today that are going to have to deal with this, that are going to have to live with this garbage down the road. So great ideas, everyone. I love hearing about them. And I'd love to hear some of your questions. Yeah. All right, so we've got about 10, 15 minutes. If any class needs to go a little early, just let me know in the chat bar. I'll make sure to come to you guys first. Uh, Ella, who's joining us uh, as an individual student, if you want to ask questions, let me know in the chat bar too. I'll be sure to come to you. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll start with Miss Kump's class. We'll go in reverse order. Uh, Ms. Kump, come on up, ask a question. Okay, Andrew, you got to take it off. Come on. <laughs> um, how long has this pollution thing in the ocean been going? So how long has plastic pollution? I'm okay, he's <laughs> Yeah. That's a great question. And really it's since plastic has started. Now, there are many cultures that are used to throwing things on the ground because for so long the you know the waste that there was was compostable. So if you were say eating a clam, you could throw the shell when you're done on the ground. It's just part of the environment. But, you know, as we have um, changed what materials we're using, that's a problem. So historically, we used to think that if you threw things in the garbage, they disappear for or in the ocean, they would disappear forever. So that pollution has been around since we've changed materials, you know, 100 years ago or so. Fantastic first question, guys. Uh, yeah. Before we go to a second, I want to bring up this uh, just post from Facebook too. We talked about, uh, oh, it takes up the whole screen. <laughs> just highlighting marine cleanups. So we highlighted the shoreline cleanup in Canada, marine cleanups in the UK, around the world, wherever you're joining from, you can use the tools and resources that are part of the shoreline cleanup uh, in Canada. You can use them in the States, you can use them around the world. Uh, and we encourage you to do so. It's a great way to give back and make a real positive difference. Uh, let's go to Miss Oaks' class. Oh, by the way, Miss uh, Miss Cump's class was joining us in Astoria, New York. Miss uh, Oaks' class is joining us in Eden Prairie in Minnesota. So, Miss Oaks' group, any questions for us? Abella, what's your question? How do you remove plastic from the ocean? Yeah. Great question. And there are many different groups trying to tackle this. But the biggest thing right now is trying to slow how much is added. Scientists think that there's about a dump truck worth of garbage added to the ocean every minute. So if we can control how much garbage is going down our streams and rivers into the ocean, that is a huge part. So those shoreline cleanups make a huge difference in terms of once it's in the ocean, it does tend to break into those small microplastics and it's quite hard to clean up. So there are a few programs going on. Uh, one of the largest is, I believe it's called Ocean Cleanup. Jesse, let me know if that's wrong. Um, but that one, they are also working on cleaning up rivers at the same time. Okay. I will, yes. So it's the ocean cleanup is the largest in history. So I'll, I'll put that in a, a banner too. Uh, another note uh, is Mr. Trash Wheel. So if you haven't ever checked this out, Trash Wheel, Baltimore Harbor, I think there's a few of them now around the world. Super, super cool thing. Great interactive way to sort of get the community involved and a very visual symbol of removing plastic from rivers going to the sea. So that's awesome. Uh, let me bring in Mr. Steltman's class for a question. Come on in, guys. Go for it, Grace. Do we know how many animals eat here? Was that, do we know how the animals eat plastic? No, so how many animals a year die from eating plastic? So they know that it's already a threat. Is there a, an idea of that at all? You know, I have not seen total numbers on that. Um, but what we do find is that most animals that, you know, wash up on shore, say a whale, 
um, pretty much any of those animals are going to have plastic that they've eaten or digested. And that doesn't really go away. It stays in their stomach. So most of those animals out there could have garbage in their belly already. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it was the plastic or something else that actually hurt them. One of the things that we covered in one of our past presentations with a researcher named Chelsea Rockman. So she studies uh, Great Lakes plastic. And one of the interesting things they found is that every single fish that they found in the Great Lakes had plastic in it. So it was 10 out of every 10 that they had. Whereas in the oceans, it was more like three out of 10. So we're still learning much more. Uh, we had Martina Capriotti on earlier and what she highlighted was that marine plastic research is in its infancy. We've only really dove in with this in the last 20 years. So there's lots out there. So if you're a kid and you're keen to help contribute to that world sort of store of knowledge, now is a great time to get interested and involved in the field. Um, before we go to Miss Burge's class and Mr. Elsa's group, some questions from YouTube. So Miss Carol's group again in Gaspésie in Quebec. Uh, welcome in guys. So nice to have a Quebec classroom in. Have you ever been on a boat or have you seen lots of plastic on the surface of the water, Daphne? Yes, uh, I definitely have. And I've, uh, you know, traveled around Canada quite a bit and seen it in lots of different waterways. But even along the coast of British Columbia, um, I've done hikes to very remote beaches where no, no humans tend to live. And there's been beaches covered in plastic, just like that first image. So I even hiked a couple days with some garbage out on one of my trips. So I have some rope and some net left over, um, but it was a beach covered in lots of fishing wow. buoys and nets just like this. But I also, when I was in Indonesia, they have lots of currents bringing pollution from around the world there. And there was a wall of garbage that I had to snorkel underneath. Otherwise I would have been trapped in the garbage. So I understand those animals. Fantastic, guys. Great question. One of the things I want to share, actually, I'm going to remove us both from the broadcast. You can see the surfer amidst all the trash. And so that's one of our images that we're really highlighting this year as part of our, our Marine Plastics Month. Uh, again, these amazing ecosystems that are absolutely littered with plastic. We find it at the bottom of the deepest oceans. We find it in Antarctica. We did a live broadcast from the most remote island in the Pacific, absolutely covered in plastic. And the good thing about this is that this is a problem that is completely apolitical. No one looks at a beach covered in plastic and goes, great. Everyone wants to be part of the solution here, and there are so many ways at home that you can take part, and you guys have highlighted so many today, which is awesome. So before I go to our last two classes, I want to share the question from Ella, who's joining us live. Um, so this is great. Any political actions being taken, voted on, that we should be aware of, in addition to doing what we can be more personally sustainable with plastic-wise, is there anything bigger we should support? If you're at home, is there something that you know of, Daphne, that we could get behind, any political things or bigger campaigns? Uh, I don't know of any right now in particular, but I would say that with uh, COVID-19, there's a big issue with masks uh, being found all over the world. And that's a big thing where we can, you know, see if it's safe enough. And through the research, it seems like they are fairly safe to use those fabric masks that you could then wash and reuse. Um, or just making sure that we're putting those masks in the right place, not on the ground. So... Maybe even doing a short line cleanup to help that too. But it, using your voice to share is huge for this problem. Fantastic. One of the things, that, a quick highlight on that, you mentioned uh, masks. So we've had someone on the broadcast before named Justine Amandalia. She's amazing. She's a National Geographic Explorer. And one of her things in Toronto, where I live, is going around and literally charting uh, how people have been re like throwing away masks in just public areas and actually using that to contribute to real science. So you can check out her work on Twitter, uh, on her website, all sorts of great stuff there. Uh, this, has been, this has been awesome, guys. All right, I'm going to go to Miss Burge's class and Mr. Elsa's class, and we will wrap up from there. So Miss Burge, also in Eden Prairie, share away. Um, Smri is going to share her question here. My question is, why do um, people throw throw the trash and the recycling in the um, sea instead of the cans? Because we have cans and it harms animals. So why would they do that? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a great question. I think a lot of it comes down to what you're used to doing. So we have lots of habits in our live lives. And you know what, being more uh, 
careful about our planet it sometimes means breaking some of those habits and creating new ones. So maybe you were used to being able to throw your, you know, banana peel and have it degrade. Even though we don't want to do that anyways, it's less bad. So people may be used to something like that, but we've got to change everyone's habits. So share your voice, share what you know, because that can really help. Youth voices are super powerful. Yeah. Uh, I love this message from Andy that just came in on that exact note. So there you go. School children in the UK lobbied McDonald's, one of the biggest corporations in the world, no longer giving out plastic toys with a meal. So youth have a huge role to play in this. You absolutely have a voice and uh, not just in personal actions, but in, you know, raising your voice for what you care about. Super important. I love that. Fantastic, guys. Thanks, Andy, for that message. Uh, all right. Let's go to Mr. Ellis's class. If you guys have a question to wrap us up, come on in. Brooklyn has a question off camera. Nice. How do you clean up all the plastic from the ocean? Yeah. Great question. So like we were saying before, it's going to take a really long time and there are some big projects actively trying to do this. So if that is, you know, maybe you can donate to those causes. Maybe you can share your ideas with others, but really one of the biggest things is educating others and sharing your voice um, as well as you could do local cleanups as well. Like I said, the uh, river systems are also a huge way for this plastic to get to the ocean. Outstanding. Daphne, this has been fantastic. I want to bring up two more banners just really quickly uh, for people to check out. So one is ocean wise is a plastic wise initiative so you can learn so much this is only a 45 minute broadcast but there are so many amazing resources out there on this site with ocean wise in general you should check them out at home and secondly is national geographic's plastic or planet planet or plastic initiative so the image of the plastic bag in the water looking like an iceberg that is the sort of centerpiece image of this campaign which almost fits in this banner perfectly so check out national geographic check out ocean wise there's so many things out there for how you guys can get involved uh, Daphne, this has been amazing. Thank you so, so much. Thanks so much for having me, Jesse. Awesome. Let me bring in everyone's uh, everyone back live into the broadcast. And Mr. Elf, Ms. Bird, Ms. O, Mr. Steltman, you could join me in saying a big thank you to Daphne and Ocean Weiss for joining us today. Go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you so, so much. I will send out resources with even more information in just a minute, an email. And Daphne, thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we can't wait to see you again soon.